Hey everybody, I'm back for another lesson from my uh, songbook. I got a request for one of the oldest songs that I've written called Honey on My Grave, and that's on page 22 of the book. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's got the chords, the melody, the lyrics. Um, it's in G, and I usually play it on the dobro, and I have some people asking me um, for a lesson on how to play it on the dobro. So I'm gonna give you just a brief um, overview. A lot of it you're gonna have to figure out on your own. The chords are in there, but um, yeah, the way I play it, basically there's three different sections. The, uh, the instrumental section, which is the same as the verse. Then you have the verse and the chorus. So um, it's in G, so there's a lot of open strings, which helps <laughs> when you're, uh, especially when you're just playing, learning to play dobro. So um, usually I start out just basically playing the melody, playing um, a, a souped up version of the melody on the dobro. So. So that's basically what I play in the beginning. You can tell it's the melody, uh, when I am long gone and I'm coming the clay. So I'm using all the, um, the notes from the minor pentatonic or the blues scale. Um, open G, that third fret on the G string. That I go to the first fret of the B string, back down. And then I go all the way up to the, the top string up to that G on the 5th fret. Uh, yeah, that's just a little lick between the 5th fret and the 3rd fret. I know I'm going a little fast, but I think you can figure it out. If you just listen to the melody, you can probably figure out where it's going. I don't do much um, in that section above the 5th fret. So it's open strings, 3rd fret, 5th fret, it's all the bluesy stuff, so it's, you can't really go wrong there. Um, so then when I get into the verse, I try to keep it really simple when I'm singing because I don't want to interfere with um, what's going on with the song. I want them to be able to hear the words. So, so I just kind of keep the beat by doing uh, kind of a muted bass line between the sixth string, that bottom G, and the D string, that fourth string. I just kind of kind of keep the beat there. That would be enough. I could sing the song over that. When I am long gone, until it changes to this C chord at the fifth fret. But it's the same thing. That would be enough. When I am long gone and I'm cold underneath the clay. I like throwing in those little bluesy third fret things. Uh, but if you want to spice it up a little more, usually what I do is closer to. a lot of third fret, uh, zero, three, and five. Um, so let's see, then when I go to the chorus, I kind of walk up, up to the C, um, and don't need no flies. There, of the course, I could play more of an open sounding chord. Um, I'm not avoiding those thirds. In the verse, I do tend to avoid the thirds just to kind of give it more of a bluesy sound. So I'm not, I'm not really playing those B strings. I kind of leave those out. So it sounds more like a power chord. Even when I'm strumming, I'm muting my B strings, both of them. I don't want to hear all that. <laughs> so, but then when I go to the chorus, like I said, I, you can you can start playing some full-on major chords just for a little variety. Don't need no flowers. Go down to the B flat. 
third fret, just a full on chord. going back to strumming. So it's a, it takes a little coordination to figure out how to like strum and sing and then switch back to playing, to picking, to playing a, a little lick. Right in time to sing the next line. <laughs> so. you're getting stuck on or what you need to work on more but uh, this is a really fun song in G um, it's always great to have those open strings because then you don't have to think so much about the notes and uh, yeah I think you know what just send me any questions you have and I'm happy to answer them and uh, yeah good luck